What if there was a framework for viewing the events in your life that would make you more resilient to the seismic shifts that we all face? What if there was an idea that if you grabbed a hold of it could form the foundation for your future success? What if there were three letters that could change the way you look at bad things that happen to you? This is E plus R equals O, the events that happen, plus our response to those events equals the outcomes of life. This is a thought process I learned a few years ago that I think is so important that I share it with my clients, my employees, the athletes that I coach, and even and perhaps especially my own kids. But why is this so important? Well, all of us will experience ease. We'll all experience events that are adversities that are perhaps unexpected and certainly unwelcome. And it's how we respond in those times to those events that alters the trajectory of our life. We were in the car. And I summoned from a place that was very raw words that were barely audible. We can't keep going through this. My wife was in the passenger seat next to me, staring blankly out the window. And I can still remember the stain of tears that were on her cheeks. We'd gotten bad news again. For five years, we'd been trying to grow our family and failed attempt followed failed attempt. Even when there was a little glimmer of light, it would be snuffed out. There'd be bad news, there'd be tears and a sad car ride home from the doctor's office or even the hospital. We can't keep going through this. The adversities that you face may be different from mine. I don't know what they are or what they will be, but I do know that you will face them. Maybe it's trying to overcome an addiction. Maybe it's a failed relationship. Maybe it's a frightening medical prognosis. Maybe it's the struggle of parenting a difficult child. Maybe it's something in your life you've been trying to change over and over and over again without success. Maybe it's something completely out of your control that blew in and took your life off the path that you thought it would be on. While we don't get to pick the adversities that we face, we do get to choose and pick how we respond to them. For too many people, this is their formula. An adverse event happens, and it leads directly to an adverse outcome. Something bad happens, some adversity arises, and it becomes the defining characteristic of a person's life, or at least a season of their life. But this doesn't have to be our formula. You see, in the mindset of E plus R equals O, the event that happens, the adversity that happens, doesn't have to define who we are. We can choose to be defined by the way that we respond to the adversity. Because you see, it's both the adversity and our response to it that determines the outcome. Didn't get the, into the graduate school that you wanted? Good. Make something great happen at the school that wanted you. Didn't get the job that you wanted? Good. Now you've got more time to build a better resume and find an even better position. Didn't get the promotion you thought you deserved? Good. Now you've got more time to get more expertise, be better prepared when you do get promoted. Something unexpected arise? Good. Now you've got a chance to figure out a solution. Do you see the mindset shift? Two of the most powerful examples, most compelling examples that I know about this change of mindset, about focusing on the R, are two people that went to the very university where we're holding this event now. I want to introduce you to Mark and Chelsea Jacobs. Mark and Chelsea graduated, moved to the city, started successful careers. They were living the life they had dreamed about and that they had planned for. They had three beautiful daughters. 
Then they found out they were going to have a son. And they decided to name him Chase. They prepared his nursery. His sisters were excited about his pending arrival. And then Mark and Chelsea got the news that every parent dreads hearing. Chase was dead inside the womb. That event, that E, is enough to destroy most people's O's. It'll rip up marriages. It'll create emotional voids that never heal. It will become the defining characteristic upon whom that adversity falls. Well-meaning friends and family gave Mark and Chelsea books on how to handle grief, and they read through a few. But then, they started to read about children that lived in impoverished areas. And their hearts ached for the thousands of orphans that are left behind because of HIV or genocide or neglect. And Mark had this kind of light bulb moment where he says, I realized that my heart was not broken over the plight of children like these, like it is heartbroken now over the loss of Chase. And so Mark and Chelsea decided to encourage their friends and family that wanted to honor Chase to do so by sponsoring a child that was in need. And when they did that, Chelsea said really quickly, my heartbreak turned. The grief was still there, but it changed shape. Do you hear the R, the response being applied to the E, to the adverse event? My grief changed shape. Their response to the adversity that befell them began to change the impact of the adverse event. And before long, this little movement to honor Chase grew and it grew and it grew, and today, Mark and Chelsea manage a nonprofit organization called His Chase that provides school and stability to 250 children in Rwanda that didn't exist before. We hear stories like that, stories like Mark and Chelsea's, and, and we're drawn to them. They resonate with us on a heart level. Because how does somebody take tragedy and obstacles and adversity and turn it into breakthrough and growth and something beautiful? How do we take the adversities we're facing even now and transform them? After my wife and I's car ride, our, we just can't go through this anymore car ride, we decided to pivot and go in a direction we hadn't imagined. We decided to adopt a child, and that started a adventure that we never saw coming but we had to decide that this e this adversity of infertility would not be what defined us but instead that we would be defined by the way we responded to it and the life that we chose to lead out of it but until we made that decision we were stuck for mark and chelsea they could have been known as that couple that lost a baby but instead, they're now known as that couple that started a beautiful ministry. And here's the beauty of E plus R equals O. Yes, it applies to the volcanic eruptions of life. But it also applies to the daily difficulties that we all face. I mean, what if instead of us being defined as the person that works with a difficult boss, we chose instead to be defined by the way we responded to that difficult boss? What if we decided to view a hard class or an arduous work assignment, or even a really tough conversation. By making a heroic R, a heroic response, what if we really took to heart the words from the book of James where it says, consider it a sheer gift when you face tests and trials from all sides. Some of you, as you hear this, have been through adversities. You have overcome obstacles and for you you have something to offer those that are on the road behind you you have something to offer those that are trying to navigate obstacles that you've already made it through for others of you you are dealing with an adversity even now that's forcing you to wrestle with the question how can I respond to this can I respond to this is this too big for me if you're like most of us, you've got both of those things going on in different arenas of life. Some adversities that you've overcome and some obstacles that you're still working through. 
wherever you are, I leave you with this. There was a farmer who had a donkey. And that donkey fell into a deep, old, abandoned well, large well on the farm. The well was so deep, in fact, that the donkey couldn't get himself out. And so the animal brayed for hours, as donkeys do, while the farmer tried to figure out some way to get this donkey out of the well without killing it. But the farmer couldn't figure out how to do it. So finally, he was resigned to the fact that there was nothing he could do to save this animal. And he thought, I've got to fill in this old well so this never happens again. And he called his neighbor to come over and help him. And the two men grabbed shovels and began to shovel dirt down into that well. The donkey looked up and felt the dirt falling down on top of him and realized what was going on and began to cry out horribly. But after a while, the crying stopped. And the farmer was curious and he looked down into that well and what he saw at first amazed him and then gave him tremendous joy because as his neighbor continued to shovel dirt down the well on top of the donkey, it would hit the donkey's back and then the donkey would shake it off and would step up on top of it. The dirt would come down the well, the donkey would shake it off and step up. So the farmer grabbed his shovel and the two men continued putting dirt down the well. It would hit the donkey's back, he would shake it off and step up. And this continued and continued and continued until the donkey got to the top of the well. And he jumped out and trotted off happily into the pasture. Life will throw dirt on us. All kinds of dirt. The secret to getting out of the hole is to shake it off and step up. To shake it off and step up. Every adversity that we face can be a stepping stone to something greater. Shake it off and step up. How will you respond? What will your R be? May we all shake it off and step up. And I wish for you the very best O's, the very best outcomes in life. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.